Hey everybody, Josh KI16AZ. Don't mind the framing, it's because I've got a loop around me and it's closer to the camera. Don't get fooled by these camera tricks, guys. Uh, today we are looking at the Cha RXL receive loop antenna. We're gonna put this on the roof and recently I've become much more interested than I have been in the past on my receive capability in my home station, not for just shortwave listening, but also for amateur radio. So we're gonna put this up because I've got some projects I'm working on and this is gonna be a key component to it. So yeah, let's take a look and then get it on the roof and try it out. So the Chaw RXL loop provides low wave, medium wave, and HF or short wave frequencies. This loop will take you down to the 220 meter band as well as the 630 meter band. We're talking the way low frequency side of HF shortwave radio. It will go up to 30 megahertz. This could be used for a myriad of purposes. It could be a shortwave receiving antenna. It could be a diversity receive antenna. That would be an antenna that you have a second antenna devoted to receiving that goes into some of the more expensive ham radios, or you could simply connect it to your shortwave listening radio. Many, many things you can do with the receiving loop like this. This is designed for outdoor use. You're going to set it up outside and you can leave it up there. It does run off of a preamp that for the US markets are supplied. There is a cost associated with that or you could provide your own. They make a European version of this loop that is actually sold in two sections so it's easier to ship and then you need to provide your own preamp. The preamp is important, you're going to need that. But I'm gonna preface this, this thing is nicely designed to go outside, it is painted coated with a finish that should disappear so Leia won't be able to see it. The kit I have here has a angle mounting bracket that bolts to the bottom of the loop antenna and then has two U-bolts that will go up against like a satellite mast. It's about a one and a half inch to two inch diameter U-bolt. So consider that when you're deciding where to put it. There is also a quarter 20 mount so you could put this on any kind of tripod. This would be great if you're an RVer or you're somebody that's uh, mobile that doesn't mind having something like this that you can carry in a trunk or in an RV. Really good listening antenna for that. So that's pretty much the details right up front. The, the believing is gonna be in seeing what it can actually do and we're gonna do an A-B comparison for my step IR on a multitude of bands with this CHA RXL receiving loop. How I'm gonna mount it on the roof? I'm gonna use a simple satellite dish tube mount that is adjustable so that I can get the eaves angle, I can adjust it a little bit, and I can get it up a little bit. Do you need to get it up on the roof? No, not necessarily. It is a loop, so you don't really have to have it that high up off the ground. But if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right, and I'm gonna get it away where the kids won't kick it over. Again, it doesn't have to be up there, but right in my mind is get it away from people so they can't see it. If they can't see it, they won't mess with it. And that's how this dad gets his uh, ham shack work done. The side of the house they don't go on. Everybody's got one of those. I recommend you uh, take advantage of that when you can. All right, let's get it outside and get it up. All right, we're gonna mount right here on the eaves, bolt it right in. And uh, I think I've actually gotta mount the loop now because I don't have enough height to do this. And I wanna do this as safely as possible. So, no, you know what? I will, Never mind. I'm gonna mount this here and then we'll get on the roof. That's the safest way to do it. Here's a more representative look of the loop. It's gonna sit just like that, right on the side of my house. Let's get it up so we can start listening, playing radio. You know, the worst part about uh, doing anything on the roof, well, falling would be the worst, but um, when you're doing something like this, don't drop the screw. <laughs> that is the worst. You know what, don't drop the antenna either, I would argue. Let's do it this way. Put the logo on the outside. So when my wife sees it, she can know which company to send her messages to. There it is. All right. Okay, how are we on this side? Good for the next one. Don't go chasing plastic either when you're on the roof. You'll be able to fall and kill yourself. 
You can pick it up later. And because I don't want to come down here or come up here again for a while, I'm going to weatherproof the connector. I do have some spare LMR 400. This may be overkill, probably is, but it's what I got on hand. So I'm going to cut this to fit. In fact, it's, it's already terminated at the end here or cut at the end. The only thing that's odd with this antenna is that it uses a BNC connector. That was a bit surprising to me. I'm not sure why they went that route. Probably just to keep it convenient. Um, maybe it was for the types of radios they expected to be interfacing. But, hey, a trash can's right here. There you go. Right on the side there. Uh, but it, it was it's curious uh, to me. So I'm going to do my hardest to weatherproof this with some coax seal right now. And we're done. Well, we gotta terminate that coax end, set up the preamp, and then test it out. It's a little high too. Well, I don't think Leia's gonna like that. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I don't think Leia's gonna like that at all. <laughs> it's too close. <laughs> too close to the house. Too visible. All right, we're back in the shack. We've got the loop on the roof. We're gonna do an A B comparison. Actually, an A B C comparison. But you know, kidding. I've got three antennas. We're on the loop right now. There's somebody talking on 70, seven centimeters, 40 meters, and I'm gonna just cycle through uh, the antennas I have available, and let's see if you can discern any audible difference. Step IR does pick up more noise. That's one of the reasons for the loop. I do live in a, a high noise environment, so having a loop will knock the noise down. Here we're on the Step IR. There's the NFED half wave. Back to the loop. It was kind of an industry standard, and I suppose, I don't know this, that uh, Harris and others may make the MR uh, radio. For instance, the, the P25. Okay, here is 20 meters. The station is a pretty much solid S9. Here's the NFED half wave. Back to the loop. I gotta ask you, was uh, was cause the COVID thing any anything that uh, involved in getting you going and uh, getting into a, getting into your general class? Was that the, uh, here's the step I R. And I'm in Boulder, Colorado, just east of Boulder, Colorado, is the QTH. Remember, the step I R is a three element um, beam and, uh, on running, 20 uh, meters uh, flex radio, and higher. Uh, uh, top. It's a pretty quiet day out in the bands right now. I was looking for some Morse code signals, but. Uh, looks like it's it's pretty quiet out here. Let's let's hop around and do a little um, short wave listening and see how how we fare with that. Let me let me show you what I do. I put the loop on. I'm gonna change to AM mode, and that's gonna give us a lot faster scroll. Uh, let's hop down to some of the AM frequencies or short wave frequencies. on some kind of Asian sounding music. So let's flip to the step I R. Whoa, what is that? <laughs> Whoa. Hey, now we're on the step I R. And we'll go to the NFED half wave. Oh, they're picking up all kinds of silly noise. Okay, now we're down in the uh, AM broadcast space. Let's uh, let's check this station out. We'll flip through the antennas again, and, and the step IR is going to fall off at this point because it's obviously lowest band that it goes to is 40 meters. So we'll we'll show you what it sounds like, but you know just keep that in mind. Let's do the NFED first. Whoa! What's going on there? I wonder where all that noise is coming from. <laughs> Go back to the loop. 
thì cái số tiền nó lại tụt xuống thì mình đó chính là cái lý do mà các câu lạc bộ All họ right, muốn step by là And you can see it's, it's died out completely. I can bring the gain back up. Does okay, but keep in mind it's not really a short way of listening antenna. It's, it's for amateur radio. Back to the loop. And back down with the gain. So this is the station that kills everybody. It's literally a couple, what, like 20 miles from my house. It's an amazing deal. Uh, right now, all of their software is fifty percent off. That's Leo Laporte. Free trial, so you should obviously try it before you buy it. Step by art. Uh, but I've been using Affinity Photo, and it is widely considered the best photo editing app on Mac. And uh, I bad. I have not used. Publisher, we'll go back down a little bit but, because I'm going to flip to the heritage, end. But given their heritage in publishing and what they've done with Affinity, not bad. So whatever I that noise was, is currently look at gone Affinity now. Publisher Windows, Mac. So you can use it on either. Back to the um, loop. And I'm gonna bet a bit that it is more signal strength decided, on the loop really than the NFED. And the loop obviously takes up much less space. You're not transmitting on the loop, but um, it, it performs relatively the same as the NFED. Pretty good. Okay, there's WWV. This is probably a good place to wrap up the test here, so I'll, I'll go back up. Here is. The NFED half wave, pretty similar. You've got some spurs that's picking up. Again, I do live in a high RFI environment, so there's always going to be something out there. It, it's, it's probably not even in my home anymore. It's it's probably all outside. That's kind of how it goes when you live in a society with other people. You're going to get stuff like this. All right, back to the step by art. Pretty similar. They both behave relatively the same on receive and the higher stuff. Where the loop really shines is is when you get down low. The panel, um, and then we put in the new system about three years ago. Uh, the, the five that's the loop, system. and that's been uh, that's been absolutely flawless ever since. And there's a step by. Uh, I was uh, I was curious what you know uh, on the very best uh, best days about this time of year which is when we get our solar back now important to remember with the step ir and the loop is that they are directional it's likely that my uh, step ir is pointed at this station whereas the loop is not uh, pointed at that station so you're going to see a little bit of a difference you know watch we'll, we'll come down yeah so we went from a s9 to an s5 and that's largely entirely due to pointing what do you think of that chameleon loop, huh? It's pretty cool, I think. It's nicely coated, so it, it blends in a bit. Leia didn't even really know it was there until I, I think I mentioned it on the podcast or something like that. And by the way, we do have a podcast, Ham Radio Crash Course Podcast. Link will be in the description. You can check that out. We post weekly. And it's my wife and I talking about ham radio, among other things. But that loop is going to be perfect as a diversity receive antenna. Some of you that follow me on some of my other social media platforms that loop is there for a reason. It's going to go into the back of a new radio that, I'm, that I've picked up that I'm going to do diversity receive with. What that means specifically is I'll be able to hear either side of the same receiver on different antennas. So I can have the step IR in one ear and the receive loop in the other ear. Because I think you probably saw on the waterfall and, and maybe audibly that sometimes some of those signals would come booming in and sometimes they would be a bit down further in the noise, in some cases multiple S units down. We saw a five S unit swing up and down. And also the loop antenna is going to be less noisy than vertical and horizontal and even horizontal polarized antennas. So it's a good option. In my case, since I'm often working north, um, sorry, east west and sometimes way uh, to the west as I'm getting over the Pacific, I figured that I would orient the loop in kind of a northwest by southwest configuration so that I can try and get down south, South America, and maybe um, Africa, 
and up north go over the top and kind of come over into parts of Europe as again the sun cycle is changing so it's good to be prepared for that kind of stuff. So it's just an extra piece, extra piece of kit, a, a weapon in your arsenal. Receiving is arguably the most important aspect of anything you do in amateur radio. Whether it's VHF, UHF, or HF, or myriad other things, you've got to be able to receive signals for you to even be able to communicate with them, to know they're there, and, and to then not also step on other people if you're trying to communicate uh, on the same frequency, what have you. So diversity receive capability is awesome. And with that said, for you shortwave listeners, this is a really cool option if you have a way to transport it and would like something that you can set up, get an extremely low noise floor and be able to pull out some of these DX stations, transmit stations on the shortwave portions of our bands that you, know, you won't necessarily be able to get with a long wire or a vertical as the noise starts to come up or as bands change. It, it just gives you kind of extra options. Loops, receive loops in particular, are fantastic. You know, we, we can't all have hundreds of feet of beverage antenna wires going in all directions around our property. So sometimes it's nice to mix it up and to try out different polarizations and different types of antennas for receiving different signals. And I think that the Chameleon Cha receive loop is a fantastic option for that if you are, well, for all the myriad examples I gave already on this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up, click the link in the description to take you to the Chameleon website to find out more about the antenna. If you haven't already, click subscribe. I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you like this type of stuff, click that bell, click the all notifications so you'll know when I post a video or when I go live. Again, I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. You've been watching the Hammer to Crash Course, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.